Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. Today, we're going to talk about the 10 amazing benefits of iris sea moss and why I use this seaweed and others like it almost every day to make sure I get a diversity of the nutrients that are found in these seaweeds. Let's first start with what is sea moss. It is a sea vegetable that grows year round and particularly iris sea moss that the one I'm focusing on today is a red algae. Now I'll talk to you why algaes are so important in our diet in a second, but let's start first start with that. It is a sea vegetable, okay? And the reason why I'm calling it a sea vegetable and not a seaweed is because you gotta understand most of the things that they call weeds are really things that are very medicinal. Case in point, dandelion. They call it dandelion weed, but dandelion is very, very medicinal, okay? So a lot of the things that we're trying to kill in nature, like the weeds, a lot of them are very medicinal, okay? So I don't like calling, you know, sea vegetables sea weeds because they're very nutritious for our bodies, okay? So that's the first thing. The other thing that's really important to understand about sea moss is that not all sea moss is created equal, okay? And let me explain why I'm saying this. I did a video that you should definitely go watch, Real versus Fake Sea Moss. And the reason why I had to do that video was because I had so many people coming to me, especially during the p pandemic, asking me for a great, a good source for going to get their sea moss. Because sea moss all of a sudden became so popular, it seems like everybody, including their mother, was selling it. And as I was trying to find a good source to refer people to, I would literally buy the product first, check it out for myself, and then determine whether or not I would recommend it. And what I found that the vast majority of the products I could not recommend. And so please go watch that video because there are a lot of sea mosses out there that are pool grown, literally grown in a pool. Some of them are just grown in the ocean, but not attached to coral, not grown in their natural habitat, so to speak. They're grown in the ocean, but not necessarily grown naturally attached to coral, okay? And that's a huge part of it. And the reason why I wanna explain that is because we may not understand this, but in nature, a lot of the minerals and vitamins and things of that nature are actually coming from things like rock, okay? But it's important to understand that you should not go directly to the rock to get the nutrients, okay? You gotta get it from the plant because the plants are capable of pulling these nutrients out of the rock in such a way that it is then unharmful for you to use it. This is why when you use an iron supplement, iron supplements are literally iron that is taken directly from rock with no plant intermediary, okay? And this is why so many people have so many issues with taking the over-the-counter iron supplements like constipation and so forth. And the people also experience that it doesn't actually elevate their actual iron levels, okay? So you gotta get it directly from the plant. That's why I'm bringing this up. A lot of the sea moss that you'll find today, a lot of it is grown in the ocean, but it's not grown in its natural form attached to coral, okay? So please go watch that video because as I was buying different people's products and explaining to people, well, you shouldn't buy this type of sea moss, especially when it has all this salt all over it. It's never like that, okay? So if it looks like that, it's probably not real sea moss, okay? Not from nature, okay? So hugely important, go watch that video, okay? But once you watch that video, and now I'm gonna help you understand why sea moss is so, so, so amazing when it comes to our health, okay? Now, the next question is, well, Dr. Price, if there's an issue out there in terms of like the authenticity of sea moss, then where do we get it? Well, sea moss comes from the ocean. All right, as I mentioned before. And you can get it derived from different parts of the world. It grows all around the world. You can get it from the Pacific Ocean, places like Vietnam. You can get it places in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, what I'll recommend to people is to make sure your sea moss comes from the Atlantic Ocean. 
Uh, I was living in Japan for quite some time, as many as you know, over four and a half years. And what I will tell you is that there was a point in time where they had a nuclear reactor plant explode and a lot of that radiation got into the ocean and they were able to detect that radiation not only on the coastal plant lines of Japan, but as far as California and as far as south as Hawaii. Okay, so it's really important to understand in terms of where I would tell you to get your sea moss, get it from somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, the other thing that I think is really important is, so let me talk a little bit about the distinctions. There's different sort of classes of seaweeds and sea mosses. Now, the particular one that I choose to use is Irish sea moss. It was popularized by Dr. Sebi, um, and I can see why he chose to use this one in particular. And just to give you a few tidbits as to why, is because true Irish sea moss comes from, or well, the name itself, Irish, Irish sea moss, should give you a tip. Uh, a large, a large uh, part of the production will come from Ireland. Okay, some of it from the North, the Baltic Sea and other areas, but in the Northern Atlantic. Okay, now here's why that's important. The Northern Northeast Atlantic Ocean is one of the most protected um, areas of the ocean in the world. Okay, it's protected by a group called OSPAR. Okay, and many others too. So there's a lot of things that can't happen and that portion of the Atlantic Ocean that we quite often see happen a lot in the Gulf, oh, the Gulf part of the United States where you're seeing all these oil spills and chemical spills that are happening on a daily basis and you're seeing people dump things in the ocean and fracking it. All of this stuff is not allowed in this portion of the ocean. So this is one of the reasons why I choose to get Irish sea moss in addition to all the nutritional benefits that we'll talk about in just a second, but it's hugely important to know and understand all sea moss is not created equal. Now, what I've done today is because what happened was in an attempt to help people understand where they should be getting their sea moss, and I found it very difficult to find a good source, I decided to become a source and uh, started selling sea moss like three years ago. Um, and so as a result, I want to show you what sea moss, iris sea moss looks like, okay? And a lot of people are actually really surprised because when they get the sea moss, it's always typically this very yellow and opaque color, okay? But iris sea moss, again, iris sea moss, this is what iris sea moss looks like. So you'll see it's like a yellowish purple, Okay just to let you see some of that, all right? Like a yellowish purple look there, okay? You'll also see sea mosses that are very like tentacle like You'll see that this one isn't like that, okay? I just want you to see, so this is what actual iris sea moss looks like, okay? If you get anything that says iris sea moss and it doesn't look like this, a, a purple, a yellow, slightly green sometimes, sometimes brown. If it doesn't look like a combination of colors like this, it is not iris sea moss. It's important you understand that. Now, when you get the, the packaging, you're gonna get it in its dehydrated state, okay? So this is what it will look like in its dehydrated state on the packaging, all right? Really, really, really important, all right? The scientific name for iris sea moss is conjus crispus, all right? Now, I'm going to take this out so you can see it, so you'll know what it looks like dehydrated, all right? So this is what it looks like dehydrated, okay? You see that? And then what, when you receive it, there's an instruction cards that you'll get that explains how this dried sea moss like this becomes this because of course you got to rinse it cleanse it and then soak it in water i've soaked this at this point for about 24 hours i started this this morning okay and i'm going to make a sea moss gel with it with that gel i'm going to be able to put it in smoothies uh, when i make my bread recipes i use the sea moss gel as well too 
Uh, you could put this in soups and stews as well, teas, uh, whatever. Um, I actually use this as a face mask. I also use it for my hair as well, too, because sea moss is not only good for nutritional purposes, but it's also good for the hair, skin, and nails as well, too. I use that as a mask on my face to kind of do an exfoliation and cleanse on my face. So I use it for a variety of reasons, okay? But I want to show you, again, what it should look like when you get the packaging. It doesn't matter if you don't buy it from me. But you need to know what it should look like, A, when once you add, actually cleanse it and add water to it, and then what it looks like when you get it in its dehydrated state, which is this. You'll see it looks like more of a purple, okay? And then when you make the gel, it looks like more of a purple is gray color as well, too, because of the blending between the purple and the yellow and the greens, okay? So hugely important to know that, all right? The other thing that I think is important is that, put that there, because we're using all of that. The other thing I think is important uh, when understanding sea moss is understanding that, again, there's different forms that you can, some people make a salad with this. When I was in Japan, they quite often made a lot of kelp salads, a lot of other sea uh, seaweeds, aka sea vegetables, okay? They would eat this as well as a salad. And they ate this on a daily basis. So when I was in Okinawa, Japan, I saw this and I said, I got to incorporate this into my diet, especially once I did the research and learned about all of these other benefits that I'm going to be sharing with you in just a second. OK, so again, it's important to know and understand not all sea moss is created equal. Don't be very certain about the source that you get yours from. It doesn't matter if you don't buy it from me. I want you to understand, be very careful about the source and what you get it from. And if it says it's Irish sea moss and it doesn't have these colors in it, it is not Irish sea moss. Doesn't mean that it's not a sea vegetable. Doesn't mean that it's not a sea moss, but it's not Irish sea moss. And just to give you a little bit of background on why it's called Irish sea moss is uh, there was a famine in Ireland uh, there's a potato famine where everything uh, in terms of food was essentially being destroyed by the famine. And during this famine, the only reason why much of Ireland was able to survive was because they were able to eat the Irish sea moss, which was in the ocean and not on the land. So it wasn't part of the famine. So the Irish sea moss literally saved uh, a huge portion of the population in Ireland, which again is why I actually get my sea moss directly from Ireland. Um, the people that I get it from have been harvesting uh, sea moss for over a hundred years, and they actually get the sea moss by using free divers, people who actually free dive into the water and sustainably remove the sea sea moss from the coral. Because what you don't want to do is destroy the coral because when you destroy the coral, you destroy the life in the sea as well too, and the sea moss won't grow at that point. So hugely important where you source your sea moss, okay? If it was not for them being that sort of sacred with their process, and the, uh, I would not buy it from them. And the other thing that I love about buying from them and being an exclusive buyer from them is that when they run out, they run out. They don't grow it in a pool. They don't grow it in the ocean. They tell me we're out of stock. We have no more. That's how nature is supposed to be. When the season is over, the season is over. All right, so cool. Let's get into some of these benefits. Number one, it is a superfood. Not just the food, a superfood. And why is it a superfood? Because it's loaded with calcium, magnesium, potassium and iodine. We're going to get into depth on that iodine, but it's important you know that iodine is not only essential for thyroid function, but every cell in your body requires iodine, okay? And so we're going to go into that in just a second, but again, it is a superfood. It's loaded with these things. It's also a great source of iron. It is a great source of vitamin A and vitamin C which makes it very good for the immune system too. So you're gonna get a ton, a ton of nutritional value or nutritional density with very little calories, 
And those are the kind of foods that are superfoods when there's a tremendous amount of nutrition and nutrients in it, but very little, little calories, okay? And the cool thing is, although a small amount of calories it has so much fiber in it, which we'll talk about number two, that you actually feel full from it. So it's good for digestion, number two. Really good for digestion because it's loaded with fiber, which is good for the microbiome, that good bacteria in your gut, and also keeping you regular with your bowel movements as well, too. And again, it's very low in calories. Okay, so you're getting a tremendous amount of nutrients, very low calories, which is healthy for the gut as well, too. Number three, it's heart healthy. It's heart healthy because it lowers cholesterol and it also lowers your blood pressure as well, too. Okay, in some studies. So uh, it's good for the heart as well, too. And, but it's also good for the heart because of many of the nutrients that I named to you before. You need sufficient amounts of calcium to have a strong contraction in the heart. You need sufficient amount of potassium, okay, to regulate fluid volume, but also for blood pressure as well, too. So it's heart healthy as well, too, all right? Number four reason why I consume this every day, I, I, I eat this on everything every day, it helps to promote weight loss, okay? So it keeps your body at a lean body mass, okay? And the reason why is because it's very high in fiber. And the fiber is what makes you feel full, so you don't overeat, okay? So even though you're eating something that's low in calories, again, it's high in fiber, so it's making you feel full, okay? Fiber pushes on these receptors in the stomach that tell you that you're full. When you're eating processed food, there's no fiber in it. When you're eating meat, there's no fiber in it. When you're eating dairy, there's no dairy, there's no fiber. So there's no pushing on these receptors that tell you that you're full. Okay, so it helps with weight loss. All right, number five, thyroid health. As I was mentioning before, iodine is one of the one of the nutrients in Irish sea moss that is very high in concentration. And I'll tell you this: much of much of the the land that we use today for agriculture is very deficient in iodine. There's very little, if any, iodine in uh, the soil today on our land because the, of the way we farm. We monocrop. We use a whole bunch of pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides and other chemicals as well, too. So there's not very much iodine left in the land. So the only place that we can get, the, one of the primary places that we can get our iodine now is from the sea by eating sea vegetables like Irish sea moss. Okay, so it's hugely important. We This is, again, why I'm incorporating this on a daily basis. We need iodine for virtually every cell in the body. There's a receptor for iodine on every cell in the body. And we definitely need it for our thyroid health, okay? So if you don't have sufficient amounts of iodine, you know what that means? you're not going to be able to make the hormones that are necessary for iod for a thyroid function. Iodine makes T4, which is the inactive form of thyroid hormone. And then from T4, we convert, we convert it to the active form, which is T3, okay? This is also essential for having a healthy metabolism as well too. So a lot of people whose metabolism is very slow, it could be because you're iodine deficient. And you're not able to make those that active form of the hormone because you don't have enough iodine. So it's important to know and understand, again, a sea vegetable like Irish sea moss, you're making sure that you're getting this iodine. And this iodine is essential for pregnancy, okay? It's also essential for menstrual health as well, too. So a lot of women who have heavy, heavy periods that are very painful, it could be because you're iodine deficient as well, too, all right? So it's hugely important to know and understand when you're iodine deficient, it can leak into virtually every area of your health, your metabolism, your childbirthing, uh, your menstrual health for women, and so many other things too, all right? It also, when talking about IRC moss, it also will help to build strong muscles. Now, you're probably thinking like, how does it help to build strong muscle? Well, it's rich in this amino acid called taurine. Okay, and amino acids actually help to rebuild the muscle when you're working out. So when we work out, okay, what you're doing is tearing down the muscle so it can be rebuilt, okay? 
to be rebuild it, you got to use the building blocks for a muscle, which are amino acids. And taurine is one of those recovery amino acids, one of those rebuilding amino acids. So I actually incorporated in my post-workout smoothie as well for this reason for post-workout recovery. Okay. Number seven, number seven, it helps to balance estrogen dominance. When you have estrogen dominance, you're gonna, especially for women, you're gonna notice that you're gonna get cysts in the body. Those cysts could be on the in the breast, they could be on the ovaries. Okay. You're also gonna have um, you know, fibrotic tissue in the breast too, where you get those that hardened tissue as well, too menstrual cramps and pains of that nature. Also some other reproductive issues as well. Men, when you have estrogen dominance, it's gonna lower your testosterone, okay? When your testosterone lowers, you're gonna lose body hair, you're gonna develop man boobs, you're gonna have an inability to actually make muscle. Uh, you're gonna feel less motivated, lower libido, erectile dysfunction. So you could see how even, you know, uh, having Having low iodine can lead to this, but also the great thing about iris sea moss is it helps with that balance as well, too, because of the iodine, okay? Your hormonal balance with estrogen, but also with other hormones, too, okay? Because in the endocrine system where we have all the hormones, when one goes up, it throws everything off. So when your thyroid hormone is off, it throws everything else off on the chain line as well, too, all right? Number eight. Number eight, it contains fucoxanthin and fucoidin, okay? Fucoxanthin is really great for immunity. It's also anti-inflammatory. And fucoidin has been shown to help with cancer. As a matter of fact, when I lived in Japan and all over Asia, fucoidin is something that they use when they get cancer. As a matter of fact, I remember doing some training. I think I was in China. And when I was there, I was learning about these different herbs and this guy came up to me and he goes, um, you know, um, are you familiar with Fucoidin? And I said, um, no, at the time I didn't know anything about it. And he was like, well, you should definitely know Fucoidin because it's good for cancer. You know, uh, my brother had bladder cancer. He used the Fucoidin and that's the only thing that he used and the tumor started to shrink in their size, okay? And iris sea moss is high in both fucoxanthin and fucoidin, okay? So hugely important. And as a matter of fact, bladder rack, another sea vegetable, is very high in fucoidin, okay? And as a matter of fact, I, I take my supplement, my multi-mineral, which has iris sea moss, bladder rack, and burdock. I put the bladder rack in there for the food cordon because the levels are so high. As you can see, this one's empty because I use it all. But again, these seed vegetables have a lot of things that you can't get from your regular everyday diet. So this is why I'm incorporating seed vegetables in my diet absolutely every day. Okay. And again, bladder rack has far more food cordon than iris sea moss. So the combination of the two really help. And even though Irish sea moss has both of them, the fucoxanthin and the fucoidin, okay? Number nine, Irish sea moss is rich in collagen, okay? I see a lot of people out there getting the different kind of collagen that are coming from this animal, this animal. Well, guess what? You can get collagen from Irish sea moss, which is great for the skin and anti-aging, okay? This is what keeps our skin looking tight. Okay, keeps us looking younger as well, too. So that's another upside to Irish sea moss as well, too. And number 10, the final one. The final one is it's an algae, which means that it's high in omega-3s. Okay, omega-3 fatty acid. Omega-3 fatty acids get rid of inflammation. Okay, and 90% of the population is actually deficient or don't have sufficient amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. Now, quite often when you're low in omega-3 fatty acids, what do your doctor tell you to get? Go get the fish oils, which smell disgusting whenever you burnt them up, right? But most of that fish oil is rancid, okay? Rancid means that it's oxidized. 
Oxidation means rust. That means that it's just gone bad, okay? Guess where the fish get those omega-3s from that you're consuming as a fish oil? Well, those fish get their omega-3s from algae, which is what Irish sea moss is, an algae. Okay, so that means that you're going to get be getting omega-3s, which means that you're going to be putting those fires out in the body, that fire being inflammation. Okay, and that's a huge benefit as well, not only for, you know, your post-workout, but most people have inflammation somewhere in their body. And so as a result, you know, consuming iris sea moss on a consistent basis, you're going to be getting those omega-3s all the time. Okay, you're going to get be getting a lot of omega threes as well, too. So, again, that's the video today. Those are the 10 benefits, 10 reasons why I consume the Irish sea moss. Or, you know, you can take a look at both of them so you'll understand what it looks like. All right. So that's the dry form. That's me. Now I've rinsed it off. I've let it soak for 24 hours. I'm gonna put this in a blender and uh, make some sea moss gel. Again, if you buy it from me, you'll get a card that explains exactly how to do that. All right, so I hope you have enjoyed this. Comment below if you've used some sea moss before, or if you've used mine, your experience. Again, this is the last thing before I go. When you get this sea moss, I've heard people complain, Dr. Price, I found a very small sea cell in your sea moss. And, you know, I said, good for you. <laughs> and the reason why I said good for you, I said, well, now you know it's real. All right. If something was growing in a pool or growing on lines in the ocean and not attached to coral, you wouldn't find any kind of seashells or anything in it. OK, but I just wanted to mention that because I get people who say that all the time. And I'm, I'm like, that's a good thing. All right. So until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed.